A stunning new development in the search for missing Utah mom Susan Powell before she went missing. Was the young mother thinking about divorcing her husband? Her close friend says yes. She described Susan's marriage as unhappy and her husband Josh as controlling. Listen to this from NBC's The Today Show. Over the eight years, it got progressively worse and Josh became more and more controlling and it was harder for her to remain herself and remain the happy person that she was. He controlled everything in their marriage from her, the money that Susan spent to um, what groceries she could buy, what she could eat. Plus, more bizarre behavior from Susan's husband, Josh. He traveled, get this, 900 miles with his four-year-old son to be in a vigil for his wife. But once he got there, he barely spoke to her family. Now he's reportedly taken his sons to spend the holidays with his family. Neighbors are shocked Josh would leave the state while his wife is still missing. Police are still calling Josh a person of interest. Now they're paying close attention to this interview Josh did with a local TV station. Listen as he explains why he did not show up for work the day Susan went missing. Why didn't you call in sick? I was somehow thinking that it was Sunday. I, I didn't go to church and I I just missed a day and thought we'll go we'll come back Sunday. So you got confused by the on what day it was. Yeah. Straight out to my fantastic expert panel also joining us tonight, Dog the Bounty Hunter, aka <coughs> Dwayne Dog Chapman, as well as Chuck Cox, Susan Powell's father. Uh, Mr. Cox, thank you so much for joining us today. I honestly cannot imagine what you're going through as this drags on. Why would a father take his kids out in the middle of the night to go camping in the snow in sub-freezing weather? And what mother would be okay with that? Susan's friends say there is no way that Susan would have allowed it. Listen to this from NBC's The Today Show. His story just doesn't add up, and so I think it was only a matter of time before it came to this. If Susan, if he had told Susan, hey, I'm, I'm going to take the boys out camping and, you know, it's 10 degrees out, it's a blizzard and we have school the next day, she would have said no way and she wouldn't have let him. But I want to go back to Chuck Cox, Susan Powell's father, and ask you, originally when you were on the show, you said basically you didn't really want to discuss your son-in-law because... You, um, you were trying to be, I guess, loyal, and you felt that, hey, I just don't want to get into it. But now you've been publicly expressing some doubts. Tell us how you've shifted a little bit and why. Well, it, it's been two weeks. Uh, the, the shock, if he, he did, if, if my son-in-law's wife is missing, uh, I could understand he might be under pressure all of a sudden everything's against him now it's been two weeks he now has competent uh legal counsel and he's back with his uh father and his his the local family so i'm i'm looking for answers i want to find my daughter and i i'm looking for a viable story uh something that the police can verify from from my son-in-law and i'm i'm waiting for that and Time's running out. I want the the help he can provide to find find my daughter Susan. A Utah court has issued a subpoena to three Salt Lake TV stations. They want the original video of interviews reporters did with Josh Powell after his wife went missing. Here's a clip from one of those interviews that we're going to analyze. A lot of times I just go camping with my boys. You know, not not anything big. I just go overnight, and you know, we do s'mores and stuff like that and so I just went with the boys I was planning to do some s'mores in the morning and um then we did and then when we got home um well, on the way home I found out that people were worried about us and we were missing Steve Cardi, and you're the criminal investigator, very, very hesitant as he speaks. Why do you think that prosecutors and uh, law enforcement want to take a very good look, not just at the clips that aired, but the entire raw tape? 
Jane, they, they want to look at him, and we saw him on that video, and he's searching for his words almost as though he was making up the story as he went along. He seemed confused. L l law enforcement is going to have to take a look at him uh, months, months prior to this, see everywhere he goes. They're going to look at his computer. They're going to look at his, his credit card records. They're going to look at his, his uh, Easy Pass records, and they're going to have to find and pinpoint where, in fact, he was that evening that she disappeared. A quick question for the father. Uh, we're hearing now as well that the couple was seeing a marriage counselor and that there were money problems. We do know, published reports, that they had declared bankruptcy, or he had and that there was debt at, at a certain point a couple of years ago of $200,000. What do you know, sir? Well, I know they did declare bankruptcy, and it, it was related to a, a, a business transaction he done, had while he was uh, working to expand a real estate business. But it was my understanding that that had all been cleared up, and uh, with his, his current uh, full-time employment and her employment, the finances were not an issue that I was aware of. Sir, I want you to know we're going to stay on this case. We're going to keep your daughter's picture out there, and we would love you to come back. Hopefully, we will have a happy ending. Thank I would you, love that. fabulous Thank you. panel. Uh, coming up next, we're going to talk about Brittany Murphy, who 